do it. Welcome back to the driveway everybody. In today's video, I'm going to talk about uh, putting carburetors on a 2 liter AVA and putting that in a Mark II Golf. Um, so if you guys are interested about that, stick around. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, do all the little YouTube-y things. Um, makes me feel good. Anyways, uh, let's jump right into it. For this video, I just kind of wanted to go, uh, I wanted to like roadmap like the things that you're going to need if you're interested in doing this swap yourself. Um, and then later in the video, I'm going to get into a little bit more of the, uh, the reason why I did it this way and some things I would do different if I were to start back at the beginning where I was. Starting with the roadmap. So for those that don't know, the 2 liter ABA came out, a, it's a Mark III engine. So, you know, fuel injected, uh, electric ignition, all that stuff. Um, I took one of those engines out of Mark III and put it in my Mark II. So I had to do a couple of things a little bit differently and I'm sure there are some hurdles that if you wanted to do this in a Mark III car for some reason, you'd have to figure that out kind of on your own. I'm sorry, I don't know the Mark III platform that well. But for those who want to do this to a Mark II, which I highly suggest, it is a very fun build, um, very easy swap, and it makes your Mark II chat. I mean, it. this car sings now. It's awesome. It sounds good. <laughs> good it drives good um, so let's go ahead and get into it so first of all you're gonna need your car here I got a mark II, uh, 1985 so pretty early production mark II. the original engine was 1.8 GX with CIS fuel injection I'll talk more about that later when I get into the, um, why I did this so firstly obviously so you got your mark II. Uh, you're going to need to get an ABA engine. There are two different variations of the ABA engines. There's an OBD1 and an OBD2. The differences are in the OBD1 you get oil squirters and dual valve springs in the head. Um, and a lot of people seem to think that it has forged internals over the, all this over the ABA t or, uh, OBD2. Um, and the first two are true. The oil squirters and the dual valve springs went away in the later models of the ABA, but all of them have forged cranks and forged rods. Um, so that's good news for a lot of people, I'm sure, that have been reading that. They don't have forged internals. They do have forged internals uh, in the uh, OBD2s, just not the oil squirters or the dual valve springs, which if you're going to do what I did here, I put a 270, uh, Tectonics tuning 270 degree cam in my head it's highly suggested that you do the dual valve spring upgrade which is fairly easy to do if you got like a cylinder head shop around you you can get the valve springs in the in the uh, in the cups for them and take them over there and they should be able to install them for you um, this is an OBD1 so I already had dual valve springs in the head I didn't even touch I didn't even bother to replace them or touch them or anything uh, the guys at the head shop told me it was fine so ABD uh, <laughs> OBD1, ABA, you're going to need, obviously, carburetors. I'm using Weber DCOE 40s, and a lot of this video is going to, like, the DCOE 40s and 45s and stuff, that's, like, the footprint that I'm going with. I think the Delortos also use the same, I think, I don't know, it might be a little different, I'm not 100% on that, but I think they're pretty similar, so you should be able to use them, maybe? I would Google that, I would, I would do some research on that one. Um, you're going to need an uh, exhaust situation for a Mark II, so going from the 1.8 to the 2 liter, slightly taller block, so I got Tectonics tuning uh, headers, uh, race headers, uh, so 4 into 1, which was just also like a nice upgrade for me, I had, the, I had the money for it, so I splurged and got a whole Tectonics tuning, uh, so header back exhaust from them, but you're going to need that to uh, put in the 2 liter into the 1.8 bay. Um, you're also going to need an aftermarket radiator or radiator fan setup that doesn't push out so far, like the OG uh, big bulky metal fan housing and stuff will get in the way of the carburetors. 
and same with the alternator uh, from the Mark or from the Mark III on the OB or on the ABA engine. The alternator that's on the ABA engine sits too high, and it will interfere with <coughs> excuse me will interfere with your carburetors. So how I solved that is I got an ABF mount for the alternator. So 16 valve. I think it's like a Canada 16 valve. Um, I found a, I found a group of guys up there that uh, CNC AB mounts uh, style alternator brackets, so it mounts it nice and low. I believe they send it with an alternator too, so that's two birds with one stone there. Um, with the six groove serpentine belt pulley on it, I believe I don't know whatever the stock ABA uh, serpentine pulley is. Um, as far as that serpentine belt goes, the water pump you will need a VR6. Uh, water pump pulley also in conjunction with that ABF uh, alternator mount and this is also I'm not running any power steering or AC or any other auxiliary uh, off of the crankshaft so it's just the water pump and the uh, alternator as far as that goes the radiator I'm using is oh god I don't even remember the brand it was a Amazon it was an Amazon special or no an eBay special I think you know, classic uh, mystery meat kind of deal. Um, the company was actually pretty reputable and had a lot of good reviews. And I will say the radiator fits, but it doesn't fit the same way the old one does. It's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit shorter, but it's a little bit thicker. So the cooling, I haven't had an issue cooling this thing. Uh, that's for sure. Um, I did have to run some custom pipage uh, for. The because uh, going from the GX, the hot water outlet comes out of the front of the head, or you know, at the front of the block, and on the ABA it comes out the side of the head here. So I just kind of went to the parts store, got some of the right sized uh, hose, and like figured out like which elbows and 90 degree turns and like a T fitting. I had to run a T fitting in to get the. Uh, hot water return back to the pump for uh, you know like for when the thermostat isn't on and stuff like that so kind of a jumbly hack job there but it works it leaks a little bit on mine but that's just because I'm not using the correct uh, pipe clamps I, I'm just using hose I'm just using hose clamps like a dude in a tiny garage and tiny driveway would so there's something to be said about that I guess um, Tectonics Tuning has a lot of these parts that you're going to want to get. Uh, one of the other parts that I got from Tectonics Tuning is the uh, water, the the water heater or the the water probe, like uh, temp sorry the water temperature probe, um, and they make a little machined piece that goes into the uh, Mark III like uh, clip retained bungs in the. Uh, in the hot water outlet from the head on the plastic there. So you're going to want to get one of those, um, or two of those maybe, I think I might have got two of those. Yeah, yeah, I got two of those because there's one that's like for, gosh, I don't know, one's just temperature and one's like the warning light, like when something's too hot or something like that. Um, there's that, the piping is kind of a mess, uh, and I did not do the water exchange the uh, water heat exchanger for the oil so I did not plumb that one in so I had to run a little line underneath behind it just kind of like I followed the original 1.8s cooling to the best of my abilities and then had to improvise a little bit up front just to run the uh, heater or just to run the uh, radiator hose to the radiator a little bit but all in all not too not too bad to get there um, and then the third thing is or and not sorry not the third thing I think the last thing really necessary or no there are two things necessary to the swap uh, that are left that I can think of right now one of them is the dizzy gear so the actual distributor gear on the uh, 1.8 liter that I pulled out is smaller than the 2 liter that originally goes in there so I had to get a 2 liter distributor take its gear off put it on the 1.8 distributor because I'm still running the same ignition system uh, as originally came with the car. That's just because it's simple and easy that way. All you got to do is replace the dizzy gear. You don't have to do any wiring or nothing. Um, 
and it falls back into where it normally goes. So you'll need that, and then obviously you're going to need to get rid of the high pressure fuel pump that comes with the, uh, uh, the you know the CIS or whatever fuel injection you have in your Mark II. Um, I think they probably made some carbureted ones. If you already had a carbureted Mark II, then you probably don't need to worry about it. I just replaced all the fuel system with a little uh, Edelbrock 3 to 5 PSI, uh, just like general vein pump. Um, you can pick them up at the at the O'Reilly's or you know AutoZone for like 60 bucks or something, pretty cheap. Um, I just replaced it back there, which by replacing I just plugged in the uh, inlet tube the to the carburetor since there's no return uh, like on the uh, fuel injection there's no return out of the carburetors so you don't have to worry about it it just pushes three and a half psi until the valve in here closes and then it just holds the fuel and the pump doesn't make enough pressure to blow anything off so that was pretty easy and I wired it to the original uh, existing harness fuel pump uh, connector which is just a uh, uh, hot in the ground so when you turn the ignition like I didn't touch any of the electric uh, electrics in this thing you just turn the ignition on it runs the fuel pump start up and away you go so that was pretty easy um, I bypassed the in tank fuel pump also I just took it out uh, disconnected it ran a piece of hose from the fuel pump or from the in tank fuel pump where that thing plugs in I just ran a piece of hose from it down to a little fuel filter in the tank so just stuck it down there so I get fuel pickup I plugged the connector back in though because there's the little float arm that gives you your fuel gauge in the cockpit so I kept all that and all that still works which is super awesome bonus um, and uh, oh yeah intake manifold for the Weber carbs to the ABA cross flow uh, a valve head that's a hard one to find. I found it. Webcon UK carries them. Um, and I'll put a link in the description to the uh, in intake manifold and the alternator bracket. Um, and I'll throw some of the Tectonics goodies in there as well that I also used for this build. Um, I think other than that... I mean, it's been about a year since I did the build, so I'm probably missing a few things in my head. But it's really, I mean, it's nothing. You know, if you're if you're if you're fairly mechanically inclined, it's really nothing to sweat over. It's it's a fairly straightforward swap. Um, there's a couple of little goofy things that you kind of have to cobble together yourself to make it work. But I mean, I, that's kind of the fun of it. And you know, if you and you could totally come up with a better way than I did it here, I'm sure of it. Um, I just did what's worked and I got it fired up and drove it and I've been driving it ever since. So, now that we're kind of done with the, uh, oh, here, let me check the roadmap here. Got the dizzy, got the intake manifold. Oh, you know, I will say the intake manifold from Webcon UK, though. Um, I don't know if it's just the one that I got or if they're all like this, but it did need to, uh, I did need to remove quite a bit of material from the actual intake manifold itself to get my Webers to fit on the manifold and to get the manifold to fit to the head uh, just like to get the nuts on the studs to actually bolt it down I didn't realize that was an issue until I went to do that and then I ended up having the clearance a little bit there here and there but if you've got a grinder and a you know like a little die grinder or Dremel or something it's really nothing to sweat over it's pretty straightforward you know you don't have to do any crazy machining. The holes are all drilled right and everything lines up good. It's just a little extra. You got to trim the fat, you know, um, which I didn't do a very pretty job of, but it works. And that's all I care about. Um, oh, you know, I did have to drill and tap for the back system. You will too. Um, and you'll notice I do have the little uh, vacuum advance dingly bit on here. Um, and I found out this, I found out this the hard way, is uh, how an engine actually pulls vacuum is from like the butterflies, like underneath the butterflies in the carburetor. So unless you have a vacuum port underneath your butterflies, just don't even bother uh, hooking up your vacuum advance. Um, it's really for fuel economy, and if you're doing this, I'm, I'm guessing you're probably doing this more for a sporty fun drive than a 
realistic economic car because the realistic economic car is the one that you just molested to death. So, uh, other than that, so I'm not running a vacuum advance. It's just straight timing. Um, it runs fine. Runs great. It's. I think you just lose. Like people are like, you just lose your economy. You know, and honestly, the economy isn't that bad on this thing. I did a 90-mile drive or something in it the other day, uh, up and over mountain passes, you know, fun, curvy road, and I was definitely getting after it. And I think I did, I did the math because I filled up all the way, and I had half tank, and this thing's like a 12-gallon tank, and I think, or it, I think it was like 117 miles or so. I don't know. I got like 24 miles to the gallon, even driving, like, you know, like really getting after it, so... You know, I mean, come on. It ain't that bad. I'm sure you could get really good gas mileage out of it, too, but I'm just not here for that. Anyways, on to the philosophy of... Oh, this car is like... A, my. This is my middle finger to computers, because um, my whole my whole idea, my whole the whole idea that I have for this thing is, is, is there's no ABS, there's no uh, traction control, there's no power steering, there's no you know, engine control module, there's no computers except for the ignition, which is, I mean, it's really hard to call that a computer, it's more of a Casio calculator than anything, it's just a trigger wheel sending a, it's just a trigger wheel sending a little blip to the ignition coil to let it spark, that's it pretty much, um, and I don't, yeah, I don't even know if I'd call that a computer, yeah, there's a chip in there, fuck it, it's a computer, but, you know, my my whole thing with this car is, is is it's you, the machine, and the road, and I, and I took the machine part very seriously. Like you know, it's a piece of mechanical, you know, it's a, all mechanically driven. It's a bunch of little doodads and who's and what's it's doing the right thing at the right time to create this lovely symphony that is ripping this thing down a back road and it's bliss i love it it's it's my favorite car S to this day i've had it for 10 years to this day still my favorite car and uh it, it would take a lot to change that i think uh, about me in this car so um it's kind of yeah it's kind of just like my big middle finger to to uh, computers um speaking of that the injection system that I pulled out of this car, the CIS injection, um, I kind of had to get rid of it anyways because it was, not that not that the actual injection system was breaking, but my fuel pump housing had a crack in it, so I was pissing fuel out of that. Um, I can't find them. They're unobtainium, and if you can find them, like they're used and they say that they're good, but they want like 700 bucks, and I'm just you know, at, at at what point do you at what point do you say I don't really like 85 horsepower? Anyways, let's let's up it a little bit. So that's what I decided to do. Speaking of horsepower, I did actually have this on a dyno, um, and it dynoed with the carburetor. You know, with the 40s um, on a day like today, 96 degrees, made 115 horsepower at the wheels. crank it that's at the wheels it was on a mustang dyno you know which is apparently calibrated to like factor in the weight of the vehicle and all that stuff so you know 115 i feel is super respectable um out of a carbureted uh you know eight valve two liter um that i didn't really do anything like it engine wise i didn't do anything out of the norm i had it uh bored over like a half a thousandth just for fresh walls and new pistons so i got fresh walls new pistons new rings um, new bearings all around you know uh, it had to, in its previous life spun a, a crank bearing so i had to get that refinished uh, and new bearings put in there i took the head in they replaced a valve seat or, two, or a valve guide or two um, all the springs were good everybody you know it was all good die cat or uh, die pendant no cracks or nothing so stock you know i didn't go over 
on the valves. I didn't do a valve job or nothing. No port job, no no port and polish really. Um, I threw the 270 cam in there from Tectonics Tuning just because it was cheap and easy, and you get a, and you do get a pretty nice boost. Um, I haven't driven the stock cam in this thing, so I don't really have a comparison to give you. But I will say it is mighty torquey, and the top end is pretty good. It's good like as it sits right now. It's good up until about 50. 400 rpm is really like if you you know if you're going past that you're really put you're not pushing it but it's just like you're you're not getting that much but the three and a half to five thousand pole is just i mean it's just you're like whoa dude little torque box the thing is awesome i think it made 123 foot pound of torque or something i think that was the number maybe 128 can't quite remember i'll put a picture up in a in a video of it doing its thing um but yeah, other than that, uh, the other things that I've done to the car, aside from the engine swap, uh, coilovers from N NGP Racing, uh, I got s new speed uh, st uh, tower stiffener in the front. I believe the one in the back is also the new speed that goes from the rear tower to the other rear tower. It's not the 3.1, but that's also nice. I've got Mark III brakes, disc brakes on the front. Um, along with you know the wheel bearings and, and knuckles and ball joints from the Mark III, which I find was a nice upgrade, especially for the '85, because the '85 had smaller wheel bearings and smaller ball joints uh, than like the later Mark IIs and the Mark III's and pretty much everything that they used for that 20 years or whatever. So parts are a lot easier to find for the front end now. Parts are easier to find for the engine. Um, the only the only tricky thing is now is like the ignition system because it's the smaller distributor the like the rotors and the caps are you, know, you can still definitely find them but you know they're 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 starting to get a little bit more scarce uh, but you know just kind of that like I kind of wanted to future proof it a little bit in that regard um, you know I got uh, I got tires and wheels on it I think uh, Continental Continental Pro Contacts and some drag wheels. Uh, that I like the look of um, and you know I mean this thing boots scoots and boogies and uh, it's a lot of fun to drive um, it's really engaging it's my favorite car to drive because it's very engaging it's very just you in the road uh, I got a, a USRT uh, short shift kit with the weighted with the weighted throw uh, in there for uh, gear changes that is something that I highly recommend everybody do to their mark too if you got that if you still got the stock like trying to find a stick or you know trying to find a hole in a bucket of mud with a little stick you know kind of gear shifting it's totally worth it to get the USRT uh, shift up uh, shift linkage kit flawless love it it is quite literally probably the most changing part aside from the engine this car has had is just being able to confidently stick the shifter where you know a gear is um, but other than that I mean you know pretty much bone <laughs> pretty much stock everywhere else uh, nothing too crazy um, anyways so if you guys are curious about this uh, go ahead and leave a comment if you guys want me to explore some other topics or whatever I'm working on a video taking it out and driving it around trying to you know show it off a little bit but uh, until that comes out, you know, if you guys want to know anything more in depth or whatever, um, feel free to drop a comment down there. Um, I'd always like to hear what you guys have to say slash think about things. Um, if you have a Mark II that you engine swapped or something, or you're thinking about doing it, tell me about it down below. Tell other people about it. It's a, it's a really cool car, and I think people should uh, start picking these things up because they're not too expensive and they're a lot of fun they're a lot of fun to work on anyways i'll leave you with that one um i'll see you in the next one peace